Now that the Remedy Connected universe is in full swing, we can expect more plot threads that span over multiple games. A few of these have already been explored, most of which were centered around information uncovered during the AWE DLC. While some are still unresolved, one character arc that began in the 60s has finally been concluded. That is the story of Dr. Emil Hartman. While not one himself, his life was spent in the company of artists from various fields. The life of Emil Hartman is a cautionary tale, one that displays a man going down a dark path of intellectual pursuits. For such a highly intelligent and educated individual, there was one lesson that he never learned. Ultimately, Hartman's ignorance on this matter led to his demise. Throughout this video, we will discuss his history, crimes, and what his failures can teach us so that we do not fall into the same trap. He began his medical career in Toland Memorial Hospital in Vermont. There, he witnessed a few patients with signs of artistic ability. These brief encounters served as the seed that would later sprout, shaping the man he would become. In his own words, the image of these damaged souls carving their dreams into canvas and clay stayed with me. Years later, he traveled to Washington State to form a private practice. In his book, The Creator's Dilemma, he expresses a belief that when artists lose the ability to draw inspiration, they risk spiraling into self-abuse and depression. The artist's voice sings as though he summoned the powers of the oceans and ether. However, at times, these energies can become blocked. The artist may think the well has gone dry, and so he finds another outlet for his creative energies, predictably descending down the familiar trajectory of depression, alcohol, and other forms of self-abuse. The therapeutic methods advertised in this book were ways of isolating what kind of creative blockage the individual suffers from and clearing it. The Crater's Dilemma, however, was written after he learned of the power of Cauldron Lake. So let us go back and take a look. At an unknown time in the late 60s, Dr. Hartman settled in Bright Falls and became the assistant of a poet by the name of Thomas Zane. Bird's Lake Cabin became the setting for Emile's first experiment and the site of his first failure. As a result of his experience there, all the esoteric theories that had been rattling around his head were solidified. A magic lake that would make real whatever the artist imagined. Imagery of oceans and lakes found within his book found their genesis here. One specific line makes this apparent. Creativity is like the deepest of lakes, and this book will only skim atop its glassy surface. To dive deep into the vast lake of your own creativity to venture to places you barely suspected inside yourself. Hartman, however, refused to dive into the physical and psychological lake himself. Preferring to stand high above in a safe place, he pushed others to go on that journey to their inner dark place. Thomas Zane was the first. Hartman encouraged the poet and witnessed firsthand the power creativity had near the lake. Zane was excited but fearful of what was happening. As an artist, he understood the dangers of this power. Only interested in how this power could be used, Emile convinced him to continue. Soon after, Zane's girlfriend drowned in the lake. Ignorant of the consequences, Hartman encouraged Thomas to continue and Barbara was brought back from the dead. Just like a djinn who twists the wish in a negative way, the story shifted itself to create something the poet did not intend. The dark presence hitched a ride in Barbara's skin, unleashing the paranatural entity. To prevent this darkness from consuming the world, Thomas wrote himself out of it and dove into the lake with the entity wearing Barbara's skin. As soon as this was complete, the volcano under the lake erupted, wiping out any trace of the artist, the cabin, and anything that occurred there. At this point, there is a fork in the road. Does Hartman accept he bit off more than he could chew and walk away to safer ventures, or trek onward, denying his role in the chaos that just occurred? His actions led to the unraveling of the poet's life in more ways than one. 
In the end, he did not personally suffer the consequences of his actions. Someone else did. Dr. Hartman managed to escape unharmed. He continues onward to a miracle he sees illuminated in the distance. In the aftermath of this event, the Cauldron Lake Lodge was erected out of an old hotel that stood high above the lake. Tortured artists were invited there in order to recreate what occurred in 1969 with Tom. Only this time, he would ensure he had more creative control. This, in his mind, would allow him to abuse the creativity of others to reshape the world as he saw fit. Throughout this period, Emile solidified himself as a highly intelligent and manipulative individual who harbors no empathy for the patients in his care. As he possessed no artistic talent himself, he relied on others to carry out and take risks on his behalf. Dozens came and went, most of which ended up more broken than when they arrived. Out of them, Zane's was not the only life he destroyed. Hartman knew he was no creator. He had no ambitions on that front, and he certainly didn't want to end up like every artist he had worked with here, damaged in ways that were hard to describe, or worse. It was enough for Hartman to maintain creative control and provide direction, to be a producer. That was what most of these people were in need of anyway. Of course, suitable subjects were few and far in between. Examples of his cruelty ranged from simple psychological manipulation to actively causing the death of his patients. For a moment, Hartman considered strangling the idiot. Mott was mean-spirited, but easily manipulated, an emotional infant who lived for his approval. Wake, by contrast, was a far more difficult subject. Mott had given him too much leash. In two days, who knew what could happen? Hartman would have to find a way to rein him in, and quickly. During the psycho-thriller comic, Hartman was being pursued by a taken Mott. To save himself, he gave his cardigan to Rudolph Lane, knowing full well that he would be mistaken for the doctor by the vestigial parts of Mott's mind. The doctor was willing to let his patient die to save himself. At some point after the 2010 Bright Falls AWE, Hartman was detained by the FPC and brought into interrogation. His crimes became known and the Bureau seized all of his assets before permanently revoking his medical license. After being released, he was left with nothing. Desperate, he geared up to engage in the one thing he had avoided throughout his career. After pushing his patients to metaphorically dive into the lake and witnessed both Thomas Zane and Alan Wake become lost in its depths, he chose to dive into the dark place himself. Hartman spent his life studying Cauldron Lake and the energies found there from a distance. Believing himself an academic expert on the matter, he felt it would be safe for him. As we saw in the AWE DLC, this proved to be his undoing. Studying something does not mean one is capable of doing it for real. Emile's hubris is revealed when he is quickly consumed by the Dark Presence before being brought to the investigation sector for containment and study. At that time, Alan needed a villain to cast in his latest story. Dr. Hartman was called upon for this role. After Alice arrived at the Bureau to inform agents of the nightmares she has been having, Hartman broke free of containment, which led this sector to being locked down. During the Hiss invasion, he became corrupted by a second paranatural entity. Only after Alan led Director Fade into the ruins of the investigation sector was Hartman ended for good. This concludes his story. However, before ending this off, let us recap and analyze what lessons we can learn from his life. Earlier, I mentioned that Dr. Hartman was pursuing a miracle illuminated in the distance. You mentioned a poem last time we talked. By Thomas Zane? Yes. Beyond the shadow you settle for, there's a miracle illuminated. According to Zane, Emile was hypnotized by this line, but it is implied that he never truly understood it. A resident of Ordinary, Samantha Wells, uncovered the full poem that this excerpt was taken from. My mother told me, to no avail, if you play with shadows, you grow sickly and pale, and forget all the wonders the sun can unveil. Beyond the shadow you settle for, there is a miracle illuminated. Handwritten on the page, Zane says he had a long talk with Emile about the meaning. To me, it seems as though Hartman only partially understood what it meant. The misinterpretation of this poem became the driving force behind Emile's actions. 
he envisioned something beautiful that could be manifested by channeling the powers of Cauldron Lake. This is a mistake. Don't you see? Together we can create something absolutely wonderful with your ability and mine. A diamond in the distance so shiny and perfect that he did not care how many lives he destroyed in its pursuit. He would not settle for anything less than the perfection he envisioned. The pursuit of this miracle consumed Hartman and made him forget one thing, a part of the Hippocratic Oath he took when receiving his medical license, to do no harm. In the pursuit of his miracle, he forgot this oath and harmed nearly everyone who came under his care. Part of his mindset can be summarized in the psycho-thriller comic. Dr. Hartman had spent most of his adult life studying the strange phenomena around Cauldron Lake. He considered himself the foremost expert in the field. He had a great deal of experience dealing with these forces, much of it acquired firsthand over the years, often at a considerable human cost. Of course, Hartman never gambled with his own life if he could avoid it. He knew full well the dangers certain creative endeavors could unleash. He made it a point to convince others to face them instead. This description begs the question, who is the true expert in a field? The individual who spends a lifetime studying a field safely from a distance, or the individual who braves the dangers themselves and engages with the field directly? Is the expert the one who never has to suffer the consequences of a flawed theory, or the one who knows the personal cost when that theory fails? Within the context of the game, Hartman is the former, while Alan is the latter. Even his name reflects this. Emil is derived from Amelos, which means emulating or imitating. His surname is derived from Artman. Dr. Emil Hartman is literally the imitation of art. After being released by the Bureau, he makes this statement. Given my acute awareness of what awaits within, my meticulous preparations, and my considerable education, I believe myself much more prepared than either Tom or Wake. Hartman's hubris led him to believe that studying the theory of something made him more suited than those who spent a lifetime actually doing it. The lodge stood high above Cauldron Lake, while Zane's cabin was right on the waters. A sense of superiority born from his intellect is reflected here. Hartman wished to remain separate from those he manipulates, both to remain safe and stand above them during the pursuit for the miraculous world he envisioned. The one and only time this man went to the waters himself, taking upon his shoulders the risk needed to create that miracle, he was consumed almost instantly. I ask again, who is the true expert? The one who stands above, studying theoretically from a distance, or the one on the ground who practices the discipline for real? Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, please drop a like as it really does help out the channel. If you would like updates on new uploads, feel free to subscribe or follow me on Twitter. Have a good day and peace be with you all.